In the last video, we saw that connecting a function to its derivative or antiderivative for one of, where one of those functions has a known power series representation can then be used to create a power series representation for the other function, either the derivative or antiderivative of the function we don't have a power series representation for yet. And so the idea is we connected one over one minus x uh, with one over one minus x squared. And so I want to mention that if you wanted to do a higher power like one minus x cubed, we could just keep on taking derivatives, 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 derivatives over and over and over again. And therefore, for any repeated linear factor in the denominator, we can get a power series representation by taking subsequent derivatives. And because we can do repeated factors, we can actually do any partial, or we can do any rational function. We have all the tools necessary. It just requires maybe doing polynomial division and partial fraction decompositions. We can do, we can find the power series representation for any, for any rational function. Um, also, if you have an irreducible quadratic, my recommendation is to use complex numbers, but if you don't want to do that, you can use, um, well, well, we'll talk about in this video what you do if you have an irreducible quadratic. Um, before we see that, though, let's actually take a look at the, the one you see on the screen here. Let's find a power series representation for the natural log of 1 plus x, and we're going to use this to find, and we're going to find its radius convergence as well as the power series representation. So like we saw previously, what I'm talking about right now is that we want to connect this function, y equals, the, y equals the natural log of 1 plus x. We want to connect this with a function which we could find a power series representation for. So for example, if we take the derivative, the derivative would be 1 over 1 plus x, for which we have a power series representation of this one because we can compare this rational function to the geometric series where uh, you think of it as 1 over 1 minus negative r. A negative x there and therefore r is equal to negative x and so the power series representation would then be take the sum where n goes from zero to infinity we're going to get negative one to the n times x to the n in expanded form this looks like one minus x plus x squared minus x cubed uh, plus x to the fourth minus x to the fifth continue on so we get the alternating geometric series right here and so recognizing that this function is the derivative of the function we started with, we can get back up to the natural log of 1 plus x by taking the antiderivative. Uh, so we just, need to, we just need to integrate this function right here. And so doing that, you know, taking the integral of y prime dx here, this would give us, you're going to have some constant. I always like to put that in the front because as this is an infinite series, if we put it at the end, there is no end. Uh, so put in the front, c plus x minus x squared over 2 uh, plus, whoops, plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the 4th over 4 uh, plus x to the 5th over 5 and then repeats, right? You want to do enough terms that you can establish a pattern going on here. And so we get c, uh, c plus a sum, whoops, try that sigma again. And we're going to go from n equals... How do we want to describe this one? Well, since it starts off at x here, I'm actually going to take n equals 1 to infinity. And then what's the coefficient? We're going to have an x right here. The coefficient uh, is just, well, it's alternating, right? So we need to have some alternating factor, negative 1 to the n plus 1. Uh, we, want x, we want n plus 1 on the top so that it starts, uh, it starts positive and not negative because this should be positive, negative, positive, negative like so. So we're going to get negative 1 to the n plus 1 times x to the n, like so. And if you don't want to do plus 1, you could do a minus 1 right here. It doesn't really make much of a difference. You just have to make sure you start with positive. But what happens in the denominator? The denominator seems just to match up with whatever the exponent was, right? Uh, like you see here, you get x cubed over 3. And so that's the pattern we've established. The denominator needs to be uh, just the exponent n right there. And so we get this we get this power series representation, but it has one defect. We don't know what the plus c is, but we can figure it out, right? Because we know this is supposed to equal 1 plus, or the natural log of 1 plus x. So plug in some strategic number, like say x equals 0 is a really great choice because it's the center of the power series. On the left-hand side, we're going to get the natural log of 1 plus 0, which is the natural log of 1, which is itself 0. On the right-hand side, because we chose the center of the power series, we should just get the constant term c. And so we see that c equals 0. And therefore, this is an instance which we would have been justified 
if we had forgotten the plus C because the plus C does turn out to be zero, but we don't want to do it because we don't want to get it right because we forgot something or we made a mistake. We want to do it because we did it correctly. Uh, that way we have, we're liable to get truth the next time around. And therefore we see we have the following power series representation. Uh, because our function, the natural log of one plus X is the antiderivative of a function with a known power series representation, we are able to find a power series representation for that function. Uh, we want to do the same thing basically here. If you want to find a power series representation for f of x equals arctangent of x, well, the idea is we know it's anti, we know it's derivative. Why uh, f of f prime of x is going to equal one over one plus x squared, right? We want to find a power series representation for this function, and we can handle that actually. We haven't done this one yet, uh, but we can handle it. It's no big deal because rewriting this as one over one minus a negative x squared, we see that our ratio is negative x squared, and therefore the geometric series will be an alternating geometric series. We get n equals zero to infinity. Uh, we're going to get negative one to the n times x to the two n. So I, I, I actually fudged a little bit, sorry about that. We did do this one earlier. This was actually done in a previous, a previous example. You can actually see uh, the link to the video right now. If you did want to see the details of that in, in expanded form, this looks like one minus X squared plus uh, X to the fourth minus X to the sixth. Continue on. So I did want to kind of, I wanted to sort of make a comment here to stop. If you're trying to find a, if you're trying to find a rational, uh, some type of a power series representation for any rational function, let's say you had something like three over X plus one, times one plus X squared or something like that. The idea is you're gonna to have to do some type of partial fraction decomposition, A over X plus one plus uh, B X plus C over one plus X squared, something like that, right? Um, you're gonna have some partial fraction decomposition. You need to figure out what, these, what the numerator is, but in terms of the power series representation, uh, the, the numerator doesn't matter too much because we just multiply by the numerator when we're done. If you have linear factors, that's great. You can use a geometric series. If you have a repeated linear factor, like we were talking about earlier, then just use derivatives of the geometric series to go from there. Um, if you have an irreducible quadratic like one plus X squared, you get a geometric series like we do here. Um, if the quadratic's a little bit more complicated than that, you'll have to complete the square. And so if you throw in polynomial division, we actually have all the skills necessary to handle every single rational function. Every rational function can find a power series representation using these techniques of polynomial division, uh, partial fraction decompositions, geometric series, and derivatives. All of those are taken care of. So what we're trying to do in this video is extend it from uh, rational functions to other functions that are somehow related to rational functions via derivatives. We saw that with the natural log because its derivative is a rational function. And arctangent, its derivative is also a rational function, this one over one plus x squared. So returning back to our problem, if we want to find a power series representation for arctangent, what we need to do is we need to find the antiderivative of this power series right here. So that's going to give us C plus X minus X cubed over three plus X to the fifth over five minus X to the seventh over seven. And that pattern will continue on and on and on and on. So this is going to equal C plus the sum where we're going to get n equals one. So we, we do start at one right here. So n equals one going off towards infinity. It is alternating, right? So we're going to get negative one. Uh, we're going to get negative one to a power. It needs to start off as an odd. Or as a, so it needs to, we want it to go positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So we can actually start off at n if we so chose. Uh, that would be perfectly acceptable here. But then what do we do? For, we have x's. We have to get some type of power. Um, what, what's the exponent going to be here? Um, it's, it's only odd powers, right? It goes, it goes one, three, five, seven. How can you capture odd powers? Well, here's a nice little trick that helps you out here. I'm actually going to go back and start this thing at, at zero. And as a consequence of starting at zero, um, actually that, that actually works out a little bit greater for us. Cause I guess if we start at one, we actually need like an N minus one right there. If we start off at zero, then we're gonna get negative one to the n, that's a positive at zero, so that's great. 
And then here's the trick I'm trying to tell you. Take the number 2n plus 1. Notice that whatever number you choose for n, 2n will always be an even number. Therefore, if you add 1 to it, you're going to get an odd number. So 2n plus 1 is always odd. If you start at n equals 0, you're going to get 2 times 0, which is 0, plus 1 is 1. That gives you the first one. That's great. And then the denominator always matches up with the exponent again. And so we're going to get 2n plus 1 in the denominator like that. I guess parenthesis isn't necessary there. So that one might be a little bit harder to grasp for us. But if your exponents are always even, we'll just have a 2n as your exponent. If your exponents are always odd, take a 2n plus 1 as your exponent. Your denominator has to match up with the, with the exponent. That's quite common when you take the integral of a power series. And as it is alternating, we get a negative 1 to the n. And remember here that since we want to start positive, negative, positive, negative, if our initial value is n, that's an even number, we're going to take negative 1 to the n. So now we have a power series representation. But what about the plus c again? Well, choose the center of the power series, x equals 0. You're going to get arctangent of 0, which is itself equal to 0. And then the right-hand side is just going to equal c. The whole advantage of choosing the center is that all of these powers of x will disappear when you plug in the center. So we see that the c is again 0, and we now have our power series representation. Uh, arctangent, arctangent of x will equal the sum as n ranges from 0 to infinity of the sequence negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. So in these last three videos, we've seen exactly all the things you need to do to find a power series representation for any rational function, and then also things that are related to rational functions via antiderivatives, such as arctangent and the natural log.